Declan Lowney, you've been with Ted Lasso since season one, and you directed the last two episodes of season three, which is the final season for now. Uh, so how did you end up with that final block? Was that something you requested or it was just scheduling wise, it, it fell into your lap? Um, it was a bit of a happy accident, to be honest. Um, I did two episodes in season one, and then Jason asked me to be a producing director on season two, which was fantastic because I got to direct four episodes, but I was also a part of helping to hire the other directors and pick the other directors and work with the other directors, help them to fit in. And then season three, he asked me to do that job again, but we just, uh, we moved to LA a few years ago. So we moved back to the UK for the job. And then we had just got back to LA and our daughter had just started back in school. And I really couldn't go back to the UK for a year and leave them here. So I turned it down. And um, so he said, can you do the first two episodes? So I said, yes. And then just before they were due to start prep on the first two episodes, the whole shoot got pushed a month. Uh, they weren't quite ready and it clashed with another job I already had, Big Door Prize, the other Apple show. Um, so I had to pull out. I, I had to, you know, I was contracted to the other show. So then they asked me, how about doing the last two? Um, and because the show had a few hurdles and there was a few delays with COVID and stuff like that, the dates kept pushing and pushing and pushing. So I was kind of hanging around waiting for it to happen, um, but it eventually did. And the script it was just meant to be you're, you're it was just to meant to be like that this. way and the script so. just kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger and no one really knew how long that show that the last two episodes were going to be they turned out the first cuts are about 75 minutes mm -hmm. um yeah. which is long for a 30 minute show uh, <laughs> so we, we we pulled back a bit but yeah they are they're they're huge beasts and i i was you know i feel very privileged being let uh at the last one particularly mm -hmm. so it was well during big. that that you know, limbo period, like what what did you know about how the story would be wrapped up? Because Jason has always said like he envisioned this as a, a three season story. Did he give you any heads up? Uh, like I know we probably didn't have scripts or anything, but he did. did he had outlines. We had a clue yeah. what was happening. I mean, knew the end had to be a big montage, but just how how big it became and how, you know, how elegant and scale was. And, and the other thing was, you know, because the show had run over a bit, you know, we had we had we struggled a lot with actor availabilities because some people were on other shows and we had to work around scheduling of stuff. And, it, you know, it, it was a huge jigsaw puzzle to put together. Um, and it's always a joy to see it put together and, and know it kind of works as well, which is great. Mm -hmm. Did you feel uh, any like, additional pressure I guess wrapping up the story of these beloved characters whom fans might not see again for a while if ever I think that pressure was really on the script you know mm -hmm. that they had to hit a lot of beats and the beats had to pay off in a way that left viewers feeling happy you know that they'd wrapped up so our pressure was more about just trying to make it all work because it was such a you know it was such a huge machine with so many moving parts um so the pressure on us was really was a bit more about containing it and making it all happen in a way that was going to work. So I think the pressure for the the wrapping up of everything was really more on the writers' heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, also, there... but it was really no. emotional. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. in the last week or so, we were you know we as we wrapped with an actor that was it that was them gone forever. The day Juno Temple left the set, oh gosh, I mean it took so long to get her out the door, <laughs> but you know she was in everybody was in bits. You know, it was a very close knit, very tight community, Ted Lasso, a really strong sense of family. And as the actors left one by one, you know, there, then there was only six of us, and then there was only four of us. And then we're down to just it's really it's shrinking, it's, yeah. It's here in LA. So, you know, just I was saying goodbye to everybody. It was very moving. It was a lovely, it was a very special thing to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, a a musical performance of "So Long Farewell" in the middle by the guys, and it kind of feels like it's it's a it's a double goodbye because they're singing to Ted, but it also kind of feels like they're singing to the fans as yeah. well, and it kind of opens with them singing directly to the camera. Was was that a choice you made? Oh yeah, no, we very. I mean, we we, we mimicked the choreography um, from the original and and worked very tightly with the choreographer to structure, so you didn't quite know what was happening. The camera just kept wider and wider, and then suddenly they're all there. And um, at the at the end of the song, we didn't expect everybody to go nuts like they had. I had a drone for the last bit of the music for the pull away. But after that, the, the team just started, when Ted just said that was perfect, the team just went nuts. They started pulling off their clothes and shirts and jumping around the place and hugging. And it was fantastic. And luckily we had three cameras rolling on this stuff and we got everything felt very real. Uh, and so we didn't use our big drone pull away because everybody hugging and stuff like that. 
felt much more fun and much yeah it's, it's a lot more intimate yeah. yeah and 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 genuine that's real stuff you know that wasn't in the script they weren't supposed to scream and shout and everything and you know coach beard is in tears practically watching them <laughs> <laughs> um i i love that you guys had like this classic sports movie trope in the episode like the the inspirational <laughs> locker room speech at halftime and then you got all the guys uh you know pulling the the pieces of the believe sign out and putting it back together so, so who was responsible for making sure there were enough pieces of the sign to fit well, together? We, but the thing is, okay, when, whenever you shoot the, the scenes in the locker room, you've got the team of about 20 with the substitutes and then a few more. So you've got maybe 40 people in the locker room. And, you know, they're all like, they're all young guys at 19, 20, 20. They all just love to have a chat and stuff. So I find it really stressful trying to direct those scenes because people, you can't keep screaming, shut up. <laughs> or your first AD can't scream, can't keep screaming that because people just tune out, don't they? Um, but I did. I said to Jason, "Look, that's going to be a major thing to do. Could we please try and get together the night before?" Um, so after a wrap the night before, he came in and we sat around the locker room and we got silence and he was able to talk. And Jason talks a very good scene. You know, he he went through it and explained to every one of them what the piece of paper meant, where they put it, why they put it, what you know, what memories it brought back for them. You know, he, it's all up there. It's, he's extraordinarily clever with it. But the fact that we had time to do that meant everybody could think about it overnight, which was brilliant because we don't normally get to do that sort of thing. And it meant the next day when we came in, everybody knew their cue. You get up, you get up, you get up, you put it there, you put it there. And we look at it and it's a jumble and then we go, and it's there. Um, so it was it was a beautiful scene to shoot. And um, I mean, that must be the longest half time in history. That half time was on for more than half yeah. an hour. <laughs> but I mean, is, there are a lot of pieces of the sign, so it, it took a while. So it, it is a very beautiful thing, and and a very beautiful thing to be part of. It's one of my favorite scenes for sure. Yeah, uh, and then there's a, a a montage at the end of the episode to to father and son, and we see yeah. uh, everyone's future. Uh, what was it like assembling all that footage and, and cutting it to the music? Um. Well, it you know we had way more stuff than we needed, of course, and uh, the final edit it, it was quite a bit longer. So Jason went back in and recut that and made it shorter and shorter. I mean, it's still two and a half minutes or something. It's still a very long montage, um, and each each moment was so different than the last that it was very hard to find a visual way. Like, you know, we we tried doing constant left to right moves with invisible wipes between them. And so a lot of it was that, but certain beats just didn't lend themselves to it. And you'd be trying to force stuff in if you'd stuck with your so it's 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 slightly organic mm -hmm. uh, the montage. Were were there any uh, scenes from that that were cut? Uh, moments were cut and moments were shortened, you, you know. But but nothing major that nothing major because all the, <laughs> the good stuff always makes it in. Yeah. Well, I mean, a, a lot of fans also read that as uh, Ted's dream because he wakes up in the plane and they also kind of take issue with Ted not being at Beard's wedding. Did you anticipate that reaction from fans? Oh. Now, I don't know if Jason had anticipated, but we, that was news to us. I mean, you're right. The, the, the plane suddenly lands and he jolts. <laughs> um, we kind of believe Beard did stay. Um, and Jane was pregnant at the wedding why Ted wasn't there, I don't know. I feel like that that's totally fine. Like they're close enough friends that they don't need to be at these kind of events all the time. You know, it's like he might have an engagement with his son at home or something, you know. And he that was make... really what he went home for. Yeah. In mm -hmm. Um, well, yeah, so like season three is uh, you know, final season for now, but there are, you know, it could come back. There's spin-off possibilities. What would you like to see for for the next era of Ted Lasso? Well, I mean, there's a few possibilities. I mean, the, I, the one that most excites me was when um, uh, Keeley pitches um, Richmond FC women's football team to Hannah, because, I mean, they would be fantastic to run the team, but also it's, you know, it's so of the moment, you know, women's football is huge again, and is huge in the UK now. Uh, and so that was very exciting. And then you could see a role for Ted to maybe come back a few times. Or if Roy and Beard and Nate, take over the running of the team and we carry on with the guys because there is a fantastic team of actors and footballers there to tap into and that maybe Ted might come and visit. You just pop in every now it's and then. Exciting. There's there's lots of potential in there for sure. You could just rename it the Richmond Way. That's all. <laughs> just, just like the book. Yeah, it was never about Ted. It was the Richmond Way. Exactly. Sure. 
Uh, well, Declan, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time and You're have welcome. a great day. Bye.